everyone welcome back to my channel this video is my Friday sews for the last two weeks as I didn't get around to recording one last week so please grab yourself a cuppa and settle down I'll tell you all about what I've been up to for the last two weeks okay so last week was a little bit of a write-off for me I did get some sewing done which I will show you but I had my second COVID vaccination on the Monday and unfortunately, unlike the first time where I didn't really have any issues apart from a slightly sore arm, this time around I felt quite ill for a few days. So I had chills and I was a bit achy and very tired and obviously the sore arm as well. So unfortunately that coincided with my Tuesday sewing group. So although they're only doing the group every few weeks at the moment, typically it was last Tuesday. So I missed my sewing group, which I'm gutted because I wanted to carry on with my Eden jacket and also, you know, fill you in on how I'm doing. But there is another one in a few weeks and barring anything coming up, I shall be able to get on with some more of my Eden jacket then. I didn't have anything much else on, so it was good. I was home all day Wednesday, which was great because as I say, I didn't feel wonderful. I was meant to be going out on Friday they do a brilliant show down here in Devon and it's the Devon County show. I was going to go on the Friday because very soon my children will be breaking up for seven weeks summer holidays and I was thinking that I would spend some time on my own enjoying the stalls and the food and just having a little mosey around before I have no free time at all <laughs> until September. Unfortunately, um, circumstances where I couldn't actually go in the end. So then, although I was home, I didn't really feel like recording. So as I say, I didn't record, but I did do stuff over the week. And hopefully you've seen that I did put a video up the other day, not my Friday sews, but a update on my 60 day no buy challenge where I said I was going to try not to buy new fabrics or patterns for 60 days. If you haven't seen that one yet, it will be in the description below. As with everything I talk about in this video, I always try and pop them down there for you to check out yourself. So what did I get up to? So before I felt unwell last week, I sewed up a pair of pyjama bottoms for my youngest son and I made them from this. Isn't this fabulous? I love this Charlie Brown fabric. Who doesn't love Charlie Brown? I'll pop some photos of my son wearing them here for you. But these are the pattern I have used before and shown in videos before. I can't remember the number, so I'll have to hopefully put it in in editing. But it is so easy. It is a one piece pattern and it is for children and adults. So it's a great little pattern and I've whipped up quite a few now. This one, as I say, was for my son. Now I was hoping that I would have enough fabric to make a pair of pajamas for myself as well, but they will have to be short pajama bottoms now because I don't actually have enough to do a full length pair. As I say, this is a really straightforward sew. I still managed to mess it up. So, um, it's only pyjamas, so it doesn't matter. But unfortunately, it was only when I was taking photos of Malachi, I realised that he has a upside down leg on one of them. But it's pyjamas, it fits, he likes them. So that's all good. So that was the first thing that I made last week. And then the other thing that I made last week was for a challenge over on Instagram by the lovely Jess. She did a challenge that she called So New in June and it was going to run from the 28th of June to the 5th of July and I'll pop up here the picture that had daily prompts and it was a really great idea I thought of Jess. She was trying to get everybody to try something new whether it was a new type of fabric or a new pattern, a new type of closure, a new technique, a new type of seam, anything really that is new, just to try. And this was brilliant timing for me because you know that I've mentioned before on here that I wanted to make my own swimming costume. And obviously that was new to me. So when this came up, it was the push I needed to actually make it. 
So I made this Denise swimsuit here. I'll show you in a second. This wasn't the first choice. I was hoping to make the, I think it's called the Bahama Mama suit. Um, it is a long sleeved suit with a zip. And I thought that'd be lovely because obviously in Devon we're near the sea, but sometimes it's not overly warm. Well, in England it's frequently not warm. And so I thought a long sleeved one would be great. Unfortunately, the lining that I had bought for the swimwear wasn't big enough because of the obviously long arm and the full coverage. So that's why I made the Denise, but that was always on my list of ones to make. I will pop in some photos here, which is what I used for the challenge. I didn't completely finish the suit by the time the challenge was up because unfortunately I ran out of the swimwear elastic for the legs. I think because it's got a very low back. So that whole section took a lot of elastic as well as obviously having to do the armholes. So I ran out for the legs, but as you can see, I took photos anyway. And today I have received some new swimwear elastic. So I will be able to finish those off. So here it is. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with my very first swimming suit. You liked over on Instagram the fabric, as do I. It's this brilliant clouds uh, with those lovely purples and blues. And then the side panel in this waves looks like it's like a photograph. It might well be and then coloured, but I love it. And um, as you can see, I did the version that has a front panel and side panels and then a very low back. And it really wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I only used a 70 ballpoint needle and I sewed the majority of it on my normal sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. And I think that was a two and a half width by two and a half length. And that had no problem getting through either the fabric or the elastic. And then I did do some of the inside because it is fully lined. So some of the inside is overlocked. Hopefully you can see. So obviously I used my overlocker as well. And again, absolutely fine. It sailed through. So it's one of those cases where I really was worried about how I would cope. And it was a very easy, straightforward sew. And I have already plans for more swimming costumes, including that, um, as I say, the Bahama Mama, because I have bought more of the... Um, swimwear lining and you can get this I have this in black and I have it in a nude color and you can also get like a power mesh so um, really good for swimwear so I will be able to make that costume hopefully so that the sun will come back and I can actually wear it down on the beach so I won't go on too much about this pattern but what I will say was although I like the costume I'm not overly impressed with the instructions little things like um this is what i got for the sizing and okay i'm assuming that those are inches because they'd be very strange measurements if they weren't but they don't say um there's no finished garment measurements anywhere and it took me quite a while to find out what this body one was and when i looked in the instructions and i read them through quite a few times it actually said that that is the torso measurement from one shoulder all the way down through your legs and back up to the same shoulder. So I think calling it your torso measurements without putting in brackets body in the instructions is a bit confusing because obviously it doesn't then relate to this. So as I say, no finished garment sizes, also no seam allowance given in the pattern at all. The only time it talks about um, sort of, well, not seam allowance as such, but it talks about folding your elastic over by three eighth inches. Well, I think the elastic is three eighth inches, so you're literally just folding it on itself. But yeah, so no seam allowance was a little bit strange, and no finished garment measurements were not very helpful. But as it was a fairly straightforward sew, and I've been sewing for a little while now, it was fine, but I would say not the greatest pattern. And as I say, I managed, but 
it wasn't the most um, helpful of instructions. But I have my swimming costume out of it. And as you saw, hopefully in the photos, I think it looks really nice with the white and black trousers that I talked about wearing my swimming costumes with when I go out into the wonderful summer that we're hopefully going to have. So those are what I sewed last week. Before I get on to what I am wearing, which is my latest make, which I finished up last night, and funnily enough, I just put a photo of the sleeve on because I, I it was late and I didn't want to try and get photos in the dark. And it got a lot of love. So thank you ever so much for everyone who has liked it or commented it on Instagram. Yes, we, we like the sleeve. Um, but before I go on to that, um, the other thing that I got in the post this week, or one thing that I got in the post, sorry, because I'm looking at two other things that just arrived this morning, is these prototype pattern envelopes from... Heather and John over at Fabuloso. And um, I know I mention them a lot in the videos, but it's because I'm so impressed. I love the pattern paper because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's lovely and thin, but it's not too thin. I sometimes find the big four a bit flimsy. So I do love the pattern paper. Their prices are brilliant because it's only £2.15 for an A0 sheet, and that is colour as well. So it's really good value. But now, as I say, prototypes, they've got these envelopes that they're going to be selling. So I think they're going to price them at about a pound. Obviously, when they do come out, I will let you know. But as you can see, hopefully you'll see this. If not, I'll put in a photo. They've got some really great, great um, little boxes so that you'll have the pattern name, the pattern company. Then you can add what fabric type you need, seam allowance. That's a brilliant one for me because I frequently, once I've cut up a pattern and think I know what I'm doing, the one thing I don't know is the seam allowance. So that's brilliant. Then you've got a space for putting down any extra haberdashery items that you might need and a lovely box for notes taking. So, for instance, I will be doing notes on this and I'll tell you what they are. So you can pop them in there so you know what you're doing the next time you come to make this. And then you can also mark how many times you make that particular pattern. So obviously they gave me this sample with my latest batch of patterns that I've had printed from. And I think it's fantastic. So really hope those are coming out soon because I know you're all going to love them as much as I do. So that came this week. So this is my latest make. A lot of you will already know what this is and it is the Adrienne top from the Friday Pattern Company. I was going to make this, I think it was last year, and I bought it and I printed it off the same night and I was really, really proud of myself that I'd got it ready until I realised I didn't check the tester square before I printed all the pages out and it was the wrong size by quite a lot. And I think at that point, I just lost the enthusiasm and I just put it away. But then at some point, I sent it away to get it printed properly on an A0. And so I pulled it out. I have had this gorgeous viscose jersey from my So Haley Jane box for quite a while. And I thought this was the perfect chance to try out the Adrienne top. I have seen so many people making them and I really love some of the hacks I've seen people doing. Uh, the lovely Jane at the dressmaker's closet, used to be Loopy Mabel's closet, lovely change of name there Jane. Um, she's done a fabulous hack with short sleeves. I've seen a hack where people have made it into dresses. So yeah, it's absolutely lovely and I am really thrilled with how this turned out. It took me I did stop and start because obviously um, I was at home working on it yesterday. But honestly, if I pulled all the time I worked on it together from cutting out the fabric to sewing the last seam, an hour. I, I swear that is probably all it took. And I have another one cut out all ready to make up. So I absolutely love this. I didn't have any bra elastic which is what a lot of people recommend for pulling these shoulders in and I also didn't have any half inch normal elastic but what I did have was some fold over elastic which I bought in a pack of three I thought I would use when I was making some of my acacia knickers 
but actually by the time I've done the waistband and both the legs there's just not quite enough however it was perfectly half an inch and ideal amount for what you need for the shoulders and for the wrists so I was really chuffed that I could sew it up straight away without having to go and get anything so I made the extra large version which I will um, I'll pop the sizes in because I can't remember off the top of my head but I think that I perfectly fit for the um, bust waist and hips in the extra large and I have to say I'm really happy with the fit the only thing um, that I was just a little disappointed about and it's not I'm not disappointed I'm just surprised was in the write-up it said that it was slightly cropped and that it would come just below your belly button so as you can see from this photo I measured and it actually is a good five inches below my belly button now I double checked and the pattern says it's drafted drafted for someone who's five foot five I am five foot five so I'm wondering if it's because I did the extra large why it's longer but for the one I've cut out ready to make I have taken off a good three plus inches from the length because I actually quite like the idea of it being uh, slightly cropped because I'd like it to sit just around where trousers and skirts come to. I know a lot of people to like to tuck it in however I'm a bit funny about my um, stomach area and don't really like to tuck it in especially as it's um, quite fitted so yeah I'm gonna do that but I mean that's no biggie that is the only thing that I would change and yeah what do you think have you made the Adrian please let me know down below what you thought of yours and also hopefully what you think of mine and lastly before I leave you all I had a couple of things arrive this morning so I'm glad that I left recording this until a bit later in the day although now that doesn't give me much time to edit and get it up, but I had two deliveries, very exciting. First one, I know, I only said the other day that I wasn't gonna buy very much if I could help it, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> I bought Tilly's new sky sundress and I have got two fabrics and I'll pop photos in here that I think will look gorgeous I'm not sure at the moment about which I do really like sorry which length I do really like the full maxi but then I also quite like this one so it's got um let me see maxi length knee length and then a mini dress so yeah I'm not sure yet so I think I might go for the maxi in one of the fabrics and then the knee probably a bit too old for a mini length dress <laughs> I'll go for the um, knee length in the other fabric or I might love the maxi so much I do both of them so yeah this came this morning so I was very excited um, because obviously it's brand new and lastly quickly going to show you this because I am planning to do a video but in my last video I did say that I was planning to make a pyjama set from that gorgeous butterfly satin that I got from Shell at So Affordable and I have tops, I have pyjamas and as I said I'm planning to make the Jamie but I didn't actually have a robe and I really like the idea of a robe so cue this package here. I bought my first ever Guthrie and Garney and she does this sewing society and it comes out on the I think it's the email goes out the first Wednesday of every month at midday and I've been getting email for quite a while loving lots of the kits but don't normally buy them this is the Sylvia robe by sew over it and so it is perfect so not only does it come with the most gorgeous fabric which I will show you in the unboxing but I can use it for my butterfly one when I make that set and that set I'm hoping I will enter in the crafty so-and-so they are doing a challenge over on Instagram again I can't remember exactly so I'll pop it somewhere on the screen I think it's the crafty PJ party and the idea is to get involved with homemade pyjamas don't necessarily have to make new for the challenge you can already have some but everyone's going to reveal I think on the 30th or 31st of July and so fingers crossed I will get that made in the
butterfly fabric and enter it in that because I think it's a great idea. But I'm going to do an unboxing for this very soon. So anyone who's interested in knowing what they have inside these kits, please stay tuned because I'll load that up hopefully in the next week or so. So that is it for me today. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I've had a load of new subscribers. I'm loving all the comments down below every time I put a video up. So please keep them coming. Give us a good old like. And if you have not yet subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you could. It just helps my YouTube channel to be seen more if it's liked and subscribed. And then people that maybe would enjoy it the same as you do will hopefully be able to see it there. So I hope you're having a fantastic day and a wonderful weekend, whatever you're doing. And I will catch you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.